Yeah. Well, we've got some emails on the subject of 147s because it's endlessly fascinating, of course. So here's the first of those, which comes uh, from Stuart Smith, who says, What's it like for a snooker player when he gets his first maximum break? Well, I bought a round of drinks for all the lads in the club and laid a 147 out in the balls and took a photograph of it and still got it in the house. And uh, very special. Very mm. special. What age were you then? Uh, 17, I think. 17, yeah. yeah. And obviously any number since. In fact, I think we've got an email on, on that subject about how many uh, 147s there are in practice. Uh, here's one from uh, Martin Cumberbatch, who says, If you start a frame, say, in the early rounds of a tournament, you put a couple of red-back combinations, at what point do you start thinking the 147 is on here? And do you alter any particular strategy or plan of attack in that particular frame? You know from the balls. If the balls are in, one, are in good positions, nothing on the side cushion. It can be the first red. I mean, I've had, I've, I've, you know, I've made them obviously practice-wise, and I've, I've looked at them and gone, well, there's one on here. As long as you, you mind your business and play the right position, and you just know where the balls are positioned. As long as there's nothing on the cushion and nothing looking awkward, um, you can very, very early first, second reds. You can sometimes see there's one there. Mm. And even when you are practicing, I mean, you know, there's one for seven. Is it still exciting? Is it still tough to do when you get into the colours? It's fantastic. The biggest buzz I ever had, and it just sounds like I'm boasting here, but I've had, I've had consecutive maximums. Really? Um, back to back, and, and the next game I had 10 reds, 10 blacks, and split the pack up and knocked the red in the middle. I was gutted, I was going for three. <laughs> but I tell you what, it was a great buzz, and you know, it's, uh, to, to actually make one is fantastic. To make two on the drop was, was unbelievable yeah, tonight. I didn't know that one. Another email, and uh, this one's from Stephen Jones. Uh, this is the one I was talking about, about uh, 147s in practice. On average, how, how often do professional snooker players make a maximum in practice, considering the fact that it so rarely happens in competition? Well, if you will, he thought three before breakfast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, seems to have made more than any man breathing, but it, it's funny actually because Willie practices and, and did practice in a totally different way to what I did. I mean, I was basically looking to make 70 and 80 when I practiced every frame I played. Um, if 100 came, great, and if the chance for a maximum come, well, that's well and good, but I practiced with Willie one afternoon at Leicester, and if there was only nine reds on the table, they all got thrown back up again. <laughs> so it's, uh, it depends on how you practice, and, and, and you know, if you make one every couple of weeks or something and you're a real top class player but uh, I don't know I never played for them really in particular yeah. and strangely there are players like John Higgins for example who took a long long time to get his first 147 for some strange reason it just didn't happen for and him. then he made one like you know a bit like buses really another one came along <laughs> the next couple of days so yeah. yeah it can happen like that but I mean it never ever hindered him mm. it's nice to make a maximum course of this but yeah. I mean it's never hindered his performances he still won all those ranking events and prize money even though he hadn't made one of course interesting you should mention Willie Thorne John because you may remember uh, a couple of years ago uh, I went on to the practice table with Willie Thorne and uh, asked him to talk us through the thought process in compiling a 147 maximum break so if it isn't too frightening a thought here's a look inside the mind of Willie Thorne okay, right I've nearly snookered myself Doug but we've got a long straight one we can get on the black if we pot it On the Ooh, black. Just uh, scraped in that one. <laughs> Not ideal on the black, but all we can do here is just roll it in dead weight and try and finish on the red that's next to the black. So nothing to do with the cue ball here, just a little bit of topspin. Just try and roll it in dead weight. Nicely on the red here. It's important not to finish straight on the black all the time, so just roll it in and leave myself a, about a seven-eighths black. That's quite nice. <coughs> Nicely on the black, choice of two reds. If I hit it too hard for this one here, I'm going to be on this one here. So I'm playing two shots in one here. A little bit of left hand side just to bring it around the angles. So there's the two cushions. Nicely on the top red. Now because of break building purposes, I've got to get rid of this red as soon as I can to make this red clear. But I don't quite have the right angle. Well I can play it here. I'm going to play the run through, just flick off this red, once again go through for the black. So I'm playing the slightly more difficult red just for break building purposes really. See now quite clearly that's opened up a, another red into play. That this time is the only red I can play for. Just screw on and off the cushion, try and finish top side of the red. So you're always thinking a couple of moves ahead aren't you? Yeah because At when least. you're going for a big break Doug, you've got to have, have options all the time. This time quite clearly I need to leave some sort of angle on the black to either go into the pack or play for loose red. So I'm going to try and finish low on the black here. See, purposely finished top side of the black. Don't have the ideal angle here, so it's just a run off the cushion. I can only really play for one red here, but I've got to try, and if I'm going to get on the black, I must try and finish high on this red. So I'm playing nothing with the cue ball. 
and there's a cue ball just purposely finished in high on the red to make sure it's quite easy again for me to get onto the black. This time, because we've only got one red, it's, it's paramount importance now that if I do get on the black, I really need to have an angle to go into the pack because I've only got now one loose red I can play for. Right. So it's just a slow roll on and off the cushion to make sure that I leave myself this angle on the black to now go into the pack. When I do a lot of, a lot of commentaries we do now, this is what is a very difficult pack. If you went full ball into this ball here, it's very difficult to get the white ball away from the pack. Mm -hmm. So what you really need to do is hit one of them half ball. This is where a little bit of luck comes into getting guaranteed position. Yeah, and the pace is important. Pace too, is important, yeah. So I've got the half ball nicely. Put a red on the cushion, which doesn't help, but we do have the one red available into the middle. If that had been John Higgins, that'd have been perfect, but you know, this. <laughs> Now there's a slight gap through the gap of the reds here, which is the only way I can possibly get onto the black. This is a bit of a delicate shot here, so I'm going to try and play the pot into the middle and try and go through this gap. Now it doesn't matter if I kiss, as long as I don't kiss one full ball, I've got a chance of the white ball forcing through here. So that's the idea here. Well, I've actually gone straight through the gap, amazingly enough. Played that too well. Yeah, played it too good. Mm. Now we're in trouble here. Well, because it's a difficult black, we're going to have to be forced into playing the kiss on the red that's on the cushion and hopefully knock it over the middle. A tough shot, this one, will it? Absolutely. We didn't get the kiss, but now it's getting quite exciting because I've, you know, I've potted six reds and six blacks, so now in my mind I'm now thinking of going for the 147. Now it's essential not to get straight on any black. Mm. So this time a little stun run through on the red. Yeah, this one rather than this yes, one? Yes, this one here, yeah. No, no, the outside one. Well done. And we've got a nice angle now on the black to do as we wish, you know. Not many loose reds now, but I think we've just about got a plant in the middle. And so only rather one really difficult ball at the moment, yeah, isn't it? The one on the cushion. Yeah. But rather than risk going into them not getting on, th on anything, because this plant's not too bad, it's not exactly set. But to keep the break going, I'm just going to stun the white on and off the cushion, try and finish in here so I've got nothing to do with the plant but draw back again for the black. So n nothing to do with the cue ball, stun on and off the cushion. Just come nicely out for the for the plant in the middle pocket. Quite lucky the plant was there actually, but this time the plant looks almost a certainty. So long as I don't finish straight on the black, obviously with playing the plant this time, it's going to open another two reds into the open. So hopefully we'll get on the. So now we've got a few more reds into the open. This is where it gets tricky. Even though the reds are all nicely situated, there's nothing that really goes in the pocket where the natural angle from the black goes. So this is where I'm going to have to risk a kiss. These two reds are available, so any kiss on any of these reds is bound to leave me nicely on the two reds. Yeah, so I'm just definitely. rolling the black in dead weight, no side, on and off the cushion, and into an area where I can get a kiss. Now any sort of kiss is bound to leave me reds to get onto the black. And if I, don't get, if I get a bad kiss and not straight on these two, we'll have an opportunity probably of putting one in the middle. So it can't go wrong then? Hopefully not. <laughs> Unless you go through the gap. <laughs> but there is one there. We're okay yet. <laughs> Actually, this is this is terrific because we, we didn't set out for a one four seven, but it's it's very much on now. Isn't there, it? There's a chance if we can drop this one in, yeah. So it's just drifted yeah. by the black, and it's just a case of getting the pace right. Because I've said this before, but it's the absolute certainty where the cue ball is yeah. going. That, the thing that's is, the secret, if I start it? finishing straight or this side, you're then struggling. Yeah. If you're going to get when you're going for one four seven, it's, a lot of the time it's better to finish high on the black than it is low. Because if you finish low, you've now to stop the cue ball going into bought, You've now got to be playing cannons on reds. Whereas high, you've always got the chance of playing one cushion, two cushions, or just straight up here or round here. So you've always got mo many more options when you're high. Yeah. Let's just put the pressure on you a bit. Six reds left. We've already yep. had nine reds and blacks. How many mm. one four sevens have you had in your <laughs> long and illustrious career? 169, but not many lately. The last three or four years have been, uh, you know, about one a year, yeah. really. I'm really not uh, as and good as I used one, to be. One now. in the UK? I won in the UK Championship. I got £5,000 for it. If I'd have done it the next day, which was the television stage, it would have been 100,000. <laughs> What's 95 grand between friends? Lucky white hair, though, Will. Right, we've got a red here that's clearly available. Rather than risk playing a cannon this time, because once I get rid of this red, these two are available here as well. These two are in a nice position to pot in that pocket, so no need to play a kiss here. The natural angle from cue ball is going to hit this red. So I'm going to have to play with a little bit of left-hand side, just to widen the angle. But this is one of those situations, Doug, where I said it's no good me finishing low. Yeah. Because yeah. then I've got to go all around the table for the black, so I must finish high. If necessary, finish here rather than be perfect, because it's very important going for a maximum to get the right side. So a little bit of left-hand side. 
That's just about perfect. Yeah, haven't come too far, which is yeah, important. Yeah, if I'd have finished here, you see, I would have to go in and out of Bork, and then it would be virtually, you know, in the lap of the gods to where the cue ball finished. Now I'm potting this red, everything's available, so nothing to do with the cue ball. On and off the cushion, plain ball, and try it nicely on the black again. Now this is one of those situations where it might be time to make a risk. This is going to be the problem ball. I know that, that the angle I've got here, I'm automatically going to kiss the red. And I think it's time to risk playing the kiss. Any sort of kiss, these two reds are available into this corner pocket. Right. Now I might not get another chance to play this cannon. Now also, if I play the cannon bad and the white stays on the cushion, I've still got the choice of these two reds to get on the black. So it, this would be the time I would be playing to knock this red out. So you're always looking for an opportunity for this one. It's Absolutely. Not a case of leaving it until it's you no have to take it It's no good getting four reds and four blacks, mm. or, and then all of a sudden you finish here on, and then we've got a red here. Yes. Because then you've got no chance of moving it. So we're going to try and knock it over the middle, but hopefully be on these other two reds at the same time. See, the white has finished near the cushion like we thought, but we have brought the red into the perfect position. Now, if I can just roll this straight one in, we have really got a serious opportunity here. I know we're getting a little bit excited, aren't I'm we? I'm getting excited even in <laughs> practice. Of all the 147s I've made, even in practice, I still... I mean, I've probably potted 15 reds and blacks, I don't know, two or three hundred times, and only made 169 maximums, because you still get excited. Even if yes. it's in practice, it's still a buzz to get yeah. a 147. No easy shots there, are Oh, absolutely. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but we're going to try and just roll it through. You've got to keep very, very still on this shot. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Well, played, Willie. Yeah, a little that bit. That wasn't an easy one. No, it was tough. Mm. We have got the one red only now. Now, I'm going to play for this red, but once again, it's a situation, Dougie, with them being very, very close. If I finish here, I'm going to have to play the cannon, and the cue ball might not push through for the black. So it's mm. another situation here where I've got to be a little fraction high. We've got the, the now the reserve. So as long as I come high, if I come too high, I say here, I've got the rod in the middle. So it's a similar shot again. Just a little bit of side, just to bring it a wider angle off the cushion. Now that's just yeah, about perfect. That black, well, you Please do. Because this is a this is, this is a real good chance. Though, no, actually, <laughs> a real good chance. Quite clearly here, I'm going to get a slight cannon on the reds when I'm running through, but that's no problem because it's not going to stop these two reds potting. So it's just a plain ball run through, nothing on the cue ball. Just run through plain ball. You know, any sort of kiss was bound to be good there. This is one of those times where it's slightly a bad shot because I finished nearly straight on the black. Now. We've got the loose red, which is always going to be the saviour. I'm going to have to risk going around two cushions here. I really want to get somewhere in this area, so I've got a choice of all three. In th this time, it's very difficult to play for one red only, because with the tension and things of going for a 147, it's always best to give yourself options. Mm -hmm. So I stun around two cushions and try and come into open clay. That's pretty good. Bounce. Come on, come off the cushion. That's not too bad, Doug. Yeah, not you've too got bad. a chance. The angle How I bigger part does adrenaline play now? You're now within yeah, this is, uh, touching distance, aren't you? I would now be thinking this is a real good chance. If this cue ball had finished an extra two inches hi higher, this would have been a certainty to pot this red, run through for the black, and then a real good chance. But the angle I have on the red, I'm actually going to have to force through this red. Because if I just play it dead weight, the cue ball is going to stop here somewhere after kissing this second red. So I'm going to have to rely a little bit on the lap of the gods where the other red's going, but force through the red. That's not too bad. The reds. I was worried really about losing this red towards yes, this cushion. Yes, on, on the cushion. But you're okay. This is nice. Now, this now is the problem ball. No problem with that one to get onto the black. So this is a situation where even though there's only two reds left, I have the opportunity of playing for both reds. What would be in my mind here is potting the black, coming off the cushion, and finish anywhere around the pink. Because I know that if I get on, the pink, on this red, I can just roll it in for the black. If I go past the pink, I've got the red in the middle. So really, anywhere in this area, I'd ideally like to play this one first, mm. because that's going to be my problem ball. See, a little bit too hard for the one I wanted to play for, Doug. I, you know, I needed really to finish there. So now we've got no problem in potting this red and getting on the black, but this is where it gets really important. I've not only got to pot the red and get on the black, I need to get onto the black reasonably well to be able to get into this red. The natural angle is not good. So a little bit of side here to go round the back of the black to get onto the black. Well, we've gone inside it, that's a, that's a bad shot. But we can, go, we can probably get away with it. I actually played a little bit more side to come this way because once I've gone this side of the black, I'm actually losing the cue ball towards the cushion. Whereas as I've gone this side around the pack, I've got a lot more room to get my hand on. 
Pink quite clearly is the obvious uh, problem for me here because I've got to pot the black, hopefully get the cue ball here so I can have a dead straight red to get onto the black. Now I've just got to get the pace right here and we've got bingo I think. Well now it's uh, re essential now you must be on a good angle on the black. The angle I have on this red is not good because the cue ball is actually running through to here. Now I can't risk just rolling the uh, red in and finishing here on the black because the black would be too tough. So I'd rather leave myself a more difficult black, i.e. leave the cue ball here somewhere to at least make sure. Of, yeah. the, I've got the rest you see. Mm. So I'm just going to play a little stun run through, try and get the white about here and then leave a difficult black but at least I'll have the angle from black to yellow. See, it's a lot tougher black than you want to play on a 147, but... Uh, but it gives you, you the know, chance of the... Exactly. See, the situation would have been if I'd have rolled it in and finished here, it would have been, you know, a really twitchy, yes. yellow, yeah. really twitchy black to get the yellow, because not only have you got to pot the black, you've got to get the pace right through this gap. At least now, with the angle I've got, once the cue ball passes this direction, which is where I'm snookered for the yellow from blue and pink, once it passes this direction, I've now got six feet where I can play position. So we don't need to be that this precise, a, really. This is a, the amazing thing about snooker. People think we've always got the cue ball on a string kind of thing as far mm. as playing for inches. But what we're actually doing is playing an area sometimes. And this is one of those situations, mm. especially on a 147, where I'm actually playing in an area. Tell me something, Willie. You've, you've not really talked a lot about potting balls. It's all about position mm -hmm. and the way. Is it, there's sometimes that you can forget you've got to pot the ball as well. Subconsciously, potting is something you've done all your life. So that's, a, that's yeah. the natural part. The hard part is always finishing the right angle on the ball to get the position for the next ball. Mm. People at home probably think we're playing in spaces of two and three inches sometimes. Have you seen from the discussion during this frame, I've been playing in areas a lot of times. Because when you're going for a 147, you have to play in areas. You can't just continue to play for every one of the reds to be finished perfect. The angle I've got on the black now, I know, is not good, but for instance, if I'd have potted the red with the rest and finished here, this would have been, especially at the crucible, £147,000. Trying to pot the black from here, not only pot the black is difficult, yeah, but, but to get, get up the angle yellow. to finish <laughs> here. At least here, the only problem I've got here is snooking myself on blue and pink. So once it's past this situation here, the cue ball, anywhere here, I'm onto the yellow. So I've now got seven feet of table. I can play to go into yellow. This is what you're thinking about in a 147. If I play plain ball, I'm kissing the pink, so a little bit of left hand side again. Rather than the white come off at this angle, I'm making it come at this angle. And once I said, once it's past here, we've got all this margin of error here. So just a little bit of left hand side. Yeah, see, once it's past the pink, you see, I'm okay. Let me get the black. Well, this uh, would have been a. Think about this. <laughs> this would be a twitch at the crucible for 147. <laughs> If it, if it finished here, straightforward, pot and screw back. But the angle I have on the yellow is very similar to the Cliff Thorburn yellow a few years ago, where Cliff decided to force through two cushions to come on the green. I'm just a little bit straighter than Cliff was, so instead of the cue ball coming back dead straight, because of the angle I've got from white to yellow, the cue ball is going to come virtually here. So I haven't really got that much margin of error here. I can only finish between here and here. But as long as I screw back and don't snooker myself on the brown, we've got a chance of the green. Well, we've just got by the brown. I didn't really get into the cue ball there. I can see the green. I can tell yeah. from here. But now you'd problems. expect to do that in this situation. Well, You're not going to play perfect shots. There's two things you could do there, Doug. You can do what I did and nearly snook yourself, or because of the adrenaline, you can overscrew it and finish here, mm. which, OK, I'd have preferred to finish there this time. Now, the natural angle from potting the green, the cue ball really is taken away from the brown. So this is one of those shots where you've got to play with a little bit of check side to straighten it up off the cushion. Plain ball angle, the cue ball would finish here, but the pace I'd have to hit the green it would probably bounce off the cushion again. So now I've got to play with a little bit of left hand side. So when it hits the cushion, it straightens up and comes back across this side of the table for the brown. Now I need a bounce. Bounce! Ooh, trouble. You mentioned trouble. the adrenaline flow. Golfers talk yeah. about, in that situation, taking one less club because mm -hmm. it, they're pumped up. Is it the same, the oh, risk well, of well, it too well, we're, in, we're in practice in this situation here, and I'm getting excited now. We've got a chance of doing it. <laughs> the angle we have on the brown now is just off straight. I'm going to try... Anywhere in the middle of the table is essential. I'd ideally, obviously, like to finish here, but mm. you can't guarantee it in this situation. I've got to make sure the cue ball gets past at least here. So I'm playing around two cushions, and once it's past here, I've got some sort of shot on the blue. I'd ideally, like I said, trying to finish here, but so it's a, it's a run through. Come on, White. Not ideal on the blue, Doug, but uh, <laughs> we're only three shots away. The problem ball here is making sure I don't kiss the black. The natural angle would be coming off this cushion 
here. So I've just got to play a little bit lower on the cue ball just to make sure I miss the kiss on the black and hopefully finish nicely on the pink in the middle pocket. Slow down, Ooh. slow down. Whoop. Whew. Pressure. Well, this is perfect. Normally in this situation you would really be shaking. <laughs> so nothing to do with the cue ball. Roll it in, on and off the cushion. Can't do anything else but be nice on the black. So it's just a case of hopefully Don't mess the, the paint. Oh dear, well, £147,000 at the Crucible. <laughs> How difficult is this black then? Well, normally 100 out of 100. Yeah. In this situation, probably about 95 out of 100. <laughs> what was it Jack Carnham said? Good luck, mate. Brilliant. What can Unbelievable. I say? Absolutely brilliant. I can't believe it. 147000 I believe. £1.47. There you go, mate. Well done. All that work for £1.47. <laughs> <laughs> I still find that fascinating. You enjoy that? It was great. The 27 takes you probably did for it was marvellous no, as well. Two, to be fair. I mean, we no. never denied it, but I know, I mean, he missed two balls, which is pretty impressive. I'm giving him a bit of stick, but listen, what a great—he was a great, great build, break builder, bully. It's, it's, it was finest quality in his game actually, mm. and he made breaks with finesse. He always made the, you know split the balls when it was the right time to go, and an excellent break builder. Yeah. Excellent break build. And even when you were watching that, you were saying, oh, I wouldn't have gone that way, I might have played it a different way, which is, again, part of the fascination of the game. There's no mm -hmm. right way and wrong way. No, everybody mm -hmm. sees it differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, hopefully the end product is the same to make the maximum, but we all, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, what it, the instance we mentioned was the last, the black to the, to yes. the yellow. I mean, yeah. I'd have played the two cushions, so yeah. I guaranteed couldn't be snookered. Yeah. But Willie plays it with the little tracer left hand side, which I don't particularly fancy, so yeah. it's funny the way things work out. Yeah, everyone does it a different way. Well, not everyone, but there are different ways to do it. But that was the way. Willie Thorne tries to assemble a 147.